Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live. We have a little bit of a different show for you today. Instead of just doing one animal ambassador, we've got three coming up that have a little bit of a theme to them. Today, we're going to be talking about animals from South America. But before we get into that, first, I want to remind you a little bit about what Earth Rangers is. So Earth Rangers is the kids conservation organization. And we're one of the largest of our kind in the world. And there's over 200,000 Earth Ranger members who are working together to help protect animals and the environment. Now, if you become an Earth Ranger, there's tons of fun stuff you can do. You can take part in our um, animal adoptions, which you would basically symbolically adopt an animal that we, uh, uh, an animal that we kind of section every week, and then. Um, with that, you can raise funds for that animal and kind of have a direct impact on their conservation. You can also do really fun missions. And those are just kind of eco activities that you can do around your own community. Things like reducing your plastic use or planting a pollinator garden that can help right in your own community to save animals. Now we'll get into that a little bit later on. Uh, we'll talk about the app and that's all available. Uh, everything you can do is available in the Earth Rangers app that you can get for free. So to get into a little bit of what we're talking about today, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about South America. So we have three awesome animal ambassadors to show you today, all coming from South America. Now, South America is the fourth largest continent in the world, and there's tons of diverse regions, uh, habitats, and climates. And because of that, it makes it really, really diverse in terms of what animals can live there. So they have mountain ranges, things like the Andes Mountains you may have heard of. They also have lots of tropical rainforests throughout the continent and even arid deserts. So places like the Atacama Desert, um, where it's a little bit drier, those also exist as well. Now, all of those different habitats allow for so many animals, like 2,700 different fish species that live in the continent. There's tons of reptiles, tons of amphibians, uh, mammals like deer, rodents, uh, sloths, porcupines. There's even insects there. And some of them haven't even been classified in the rainforest because there's just so many of them uh, there. And in fact, uh, South America has the largest array of butterflies of any continent in the world. So that's pretty neat. They're also known as because they have over 3,000 different species of birds there. And 25 of those families are even endemic. And that means that 25 of those families of birds can only be found in South America and nowhere else in the world. So that's pretty important when we're talking about species diversity. Now, today we'll talk about a few different species, and we're going to focus on the ones that are arboreal, or at least semi-arboreal, and that means that they like to live in the trees. Now, like I mentioned, there's lots of rainforests in South America, and so a lot of animals have adapted life living in the trees. So there's lots of different habitats within those forests, and we'll talk a little bit more about that today and why these animals are specialists in those habitats. All right, so I think that's enough of an introduction. I think we should get into our first animal ambassador. So without further ado, let's all welcome Quillo. All right, hello everyone. I wanna introduce you to my good friend, Quillo. So as she's climbing up her tree, we'll give her a quick little treat. So Quillo, I'm gonna come around front so everyone can see me a bit better. Quillo is what we call a prehensile tailed porcupine. And um, I'm sure a lot of you already knew just from looking at her that she is a porcupine. And what gave it away? Well, the fact that she has quills. Did you know that an adult porcupine can have over 30,000 quills on their body? But Quillo isn't born like this. When she's born, she is covered in really soft orange hairs. And these will eventually harden into her quills that you see now. And these quills are actually made of keratin, which is what our hair and our fingernails are made of, which is pretty awesome. 
Now, if you're looking at Quillow right now, I'm pretty sure you can tell that she doesn't look like the porcupines that we have here in North America. And that is because, like Kyla said, today is a South American episode. Quillow is from South America. So she lives in the forest in Venezuela, Guyana, Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, Trinidad, and the extreme northern regions of Argentina. Oh, Quillow is telling me that she is hungry and wants another tree. But yeah, that's where you can find Quillow is in these trees. Now, like Kyla said, Quillow is what we call an arboreal species, which is just a fancy word for animals that like to spend a lot of time up in the trees, which definitely describes Quillow. In fact, Quillow may spend about 85% of her time up in the trees, which is where she sleeps and forages for food. Now, I'm going to read some comments to Quillow because she can't really read very well. Quillow doesn't have very good eyesight, but she has an excellent sense of smell. So Quillow, people are saying, um, Quillow, Charlotte Anna, I think that's Earth Ranger Liam. Haley says she's so cute. Bailey says Quillow is my favorite. Lisa says so adorable. Catherine says she has such a big nose, which is true. So Quillow can smell really well. So what also is great about her living in South America, the reason that South America is the perfect habitat for Quillow is not only are there tons and tons of trees for her to live in, but her favorite foods come from there. So in fact, she likes to eat. I'll actually have a question for everyone watching. We'll ask a question. What do you think Quillow here likes to eat? So I'll give you a hint. When she's up in the trees, she can reach up really high and she may grab a tree branch and bring it towards her. So whatever she likes to eat is found up in the trees. So we'll wait for some guesses. What do you all think Quillow likes to eat? Now, while I'm waiting for you all to answer, I'll tell you another reason why Quillow is important for her to live in these forests. So if you can see a little bit, Quillow has a, t a long tail, but it is a prehensile tail. So I'll just point to it right there. That is her tail. And she's actually able to wrap that around trees like a monkey can. And it also is a very strong. It can actually hold her entire body weight. So if she were to slip and fall in the trees, it would prevent her from falling to the ground, which is a very cool adaptation if you want to live high up in the rainforest. All right, so we have some answers. Catherine says fruits. Uh, Bailey says leaves. And Lisa says leaves, fruits, birds. Well, you guys are correct. Probably not the birds part because Quillow is a herbivore, not an omnivore. But Quillow definitely loves, loves to eat fruits, leaves. She'll eat shoots, stems. She'll even eat tree bark. And if me and you tried to eat tree bark, our teeth would probably be grated down to nothing. We would have no teeth left. But Quillow is part of the rodent family. So her teeth never stop growing. So she was able to eat as much tree bark as possible. So that is also why it's really important that Quillow lives here in South America. Now, she also needs uh, the warm weather. She loves warm weather. She likes it to be um, pretty humid and nice. Oh, she needs another treat. So that's also why she needs these branches. Now, another thing about Quillow is Quillow is nocturnal. So that means that she sleeps all day and stays up at night. Now, a sleeping por an awake porcupine is pretty dangerous. You definitely don't want to come in contact with one of those. But a sleeping porcupine might be easier for a predator to sneak up on. So Quillow needs these trees. She'll sleep in hollows. She might sleep in the crevices of trees. Um, so she needs safe places that are high up above so predators can't get to her as well. And that means that Quillow also does not have the best eyesight. So the trees kind of help her to navigate and find her way around by feeling about the branches. Um, as well, she also, when she is a baby, like I said before, Quillow doesn't have those quills when she's little. And one thing you may not know about porcupines is that when they are born, they are born pretty mature. So they can already climb, they can already open their eyes, and they can navigate around the forest. Now, Quillow, the mom, sorry, Prehensile porcupine moms aren't the best caregivers. So they don't spend a lot of time taking care of their babies. Their babies kind of hang out near them, but are on their own. So being able to live high up in the trees protects the babies from predators that may live more on the ground, um, as well like things like jaguars, which is definitely something that they need to look out for. So it's really good that Quillow, again, lives up in these trees. Um, South America is a really important place for a lot of animals, and Quillow is definitely one of them. She does spend most of her time, like I said, up in those trees. Now, I think if everyone is ready to meet our second animal ambassador, send me some thumbs up. I'll say um, some comments quickly, though, while we're getting him ready. So, Mayor Mac, 
Uh, says, cool, I will look out for her in the trees, Emma. Well, yes, definitely. If you're in um, parts of the rainforest, definitely look out for them. You might be able to see them at the very top. And Serena says she's very cute. Quillo is adorable. Look at that big nose. All right, so I think our second animal ambassador is ready to meet all of you. So this animal um, is also found high up in the trees. Him and Quillo might have even seen each other up in the treetops. So without further ado, let's introduce you all to Nacho. All right, this here is Nacho. Now, Nacho is something called a curl crested arasari. Now, it's a pretty interesting name, but he actually gets that name, as you can tell, from that those curly feathers on the top of his head. Now, he's got one sticking up. He didn't do his hair, his feathers. Uh, he didn't get it done today to be on this live, so he's kind of got a little alfalfa there. But those feathers is what gives him his name. They're kind of hard and plasticky. They almost look like he's gelled them for this live today, but he didn't. He just looks like that all the time, believe it or not. Now, you might not have heard of an Arasari before, but basically it's a small type of toucan. So I'm sure you've heard of toucans, um, kind of like Toucan Sam, but he's much smaller, um, but can be found in similar areas. So just like Quillo, uh, Nacho here can be found in uh, South America towards the Amazon basin. So he lives in lowland rainforests. So those forests are super important for them. They rely on them for a lot of things. He gets very excited talking about forests as well. So those forests have lots and lots of trees for them to spend their time in. And they also have all of their food available. Now, Nacho is primarily a frugivore, which means just like it sounds, he loves to eat fruit. Just like me, I love fruit as well. Now, my favorite uh, would be oranges and apples, but Nacho's favorite is a little bit different. So Nacho will primarily eat figs, actually, believe it or not, in the forest. Um, that's one of his favorite fruits. They'll also eat things like papayas, um, pretty much anything that they can find, little berries that they can find in the tree as well. So those trees are super important. They also are really social. So they like to hang out all the time as a big group in those forests. Uh, they'll forage together and they'll actually mate for life. So they are monogamous. So a female and a male will stay together for their entire life, which is pretty awesome. Now, these forests are also really important for when they're having their eggs. So they will uh, make a little nest, a little den in the hollows of trees. Sometimes they're left by woodpeckers or sometimes um, they're just kind of old decaying little holes in really, really old big trees that they rely on. And they'll lay their eggs in there between three to four eggs. Um, and the male and the female will both incubate them. So they'll take turns because they know that sharing that duty is really, really important. Uh, and then their uh, babies will hatch and stay with their family for the first little bit. Oh, Nacho's giving a nice little wing stretch there. <laughs> he wants me to talk about the next point that it's really important uh, for him and living in South America is those wings. So you can see they're kind of small. They're not super big. They're not like a hawk's wings. They're not like an eagle's wings. They're pretty short and stumpy. I'm sorry, Nacho, to let you know. But they actually, um, he's not the best flyer because of them. So he has to rely on those forests with lots and lots of trees really close together so that he can kind of hop instead of fly because he's not very good at flying really long distances. So those trees being really close together, having lots of foliage, allow them to have smaller jumps so that they can make it through that forest and go talk to their neighbors and say hi to all their friends and things like that. Now, you might have also noticed Nacho has this giant beak. Now, just like toucans, you might be aware they have that beak. It's actually really important for them. It helps them to reach the fruits that they're finding in the forest. So they don't have a long hand like we do where they can pick an apple off a tree. He probably would fall right off the branch if he tried to do that with his feet. So instead, that beak is really long and helps him to find that fruit. But it's also really important for another reason. It kind of acts like its own his own air conditioner. So it's got lots and lots of nerve ending, lots of blood vessels along the edge of it all along the surface. And that helps when he's really hot, um, the blood 
uh, that's carrying the heat can actually, uh, the heat will escape through his beak because he sends all the blood to that beak and that heat will escape. So it's kind of like opening a window when it's really, really hot out. He's just giving you a nice close up version of how beautiful that beak is. Now, if it's really cold at night or something, it's ha they're having a cold day in South America, they uh, will actually restrict the blood flow to their beak. So close up some of those blood vessels so that the heat doesn't escape and they can stay a little bit warmer. So he's kind of all got it figured out. Give me a little bit of a grape now. One of my favorites, actually. But oh, that, there you go. You're going to eat that. I don't know if you saw, but he's also got a very long tongue. I'll see if I can show it to you again. He might lick his beak a little bit. So his tongue is actually really long and it is feathered. Kind of looks like a like a paintbrush. And that helps to increase surface area so that he can taste all his delicious fruits. But it also helps him to kind of move the food down into his beak because he doesn't have teeth. Um, so he doesn't really, if it gets stuck, he uses that tongue kind of like a brush to help push it down. Now, Nacho is very, very happy. I think he's had a few snacks. He's looking great. Um, I, I hope he explained a little bit about how important South America habitat is for him. So those forests, the, um, the humidity, all of that is really, really important for birds just like Nacho. And Nacho actually wants to introduce our third and final animal ambassador of the day that also comes from South America. Nacho might see him around every now and then. So let's all welcome Draco. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to make sure my mic is on. Perfect. So this here is Draco. Going to give you guys a nice close up of him. He is the Cayman lizard. You guys could see that up on the screen. And of course, he also comes from South America. Now, specifically, you're going to find these guys around the Amazon River, along the Amazon River. So they could be found in Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and some parts of Brazil as well in Guyana. Now, the reason why you guys are going to find uh, 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 lizards like Draco here along the Amazon River, li excuse me, river <laughs> is because these guys are actually semi uh, terrestrial, so they will be uh, spend their time on the ground. They'll spend their time up in trees as well, but they are also semi-aquatic. So half of the time is going to be in the water and half of the time is going to be up in the trees or on land, which is really, really interesting, especially for a large lizard like Draco here. So in in order for him to be able to properly swim, he has so many cool adaptions or adaptations. Sorry. So first, you have a super long tail. I can't even get it all the way in there. You could see this long tail. It's kind of laterally flattened. I'm going to put him up on the table in a little bit for you guys to see it better. Now, this actually acts like a propeller when he's swimming in the water. So he's kind of going to swim like a snake. If you guys ever see water snakes swimming in the water, that's kind of like how Draco swims. He kind of wiggles his body in the in the water and moves around, and his tail is excellent at helping him to to uh, propel himself and control and move him move himself around so he could get around in the water nice and quickly now you guys can see he's obviously covered in scales he has thick nice and thick scales all over on his back and his entire body of course now this is for to help him for protection now some people you guys might be thinking if he's part or asking if he's part of the crocodilian family because he kind of looks like a caiman or a crocodile crocodile or an alligator however he does not belong in that same type of family but he just has the same type of skin that thick bony skin uh, that they have to protect themselves now i'm going to put him up on the table so you guys could see him a little better awesome we changed up the camera a little bit there he is and you can see a super long tail now it's almost uh, about the same size as his body if not a little bit longer now Living in South America, he needs that really, really warm and wet habitat. Now, the rake, <laughs> I love that. You know what? I love lizards too, and Draco is one of my favorites as well. So I love that comment, uh, Charlotte. Um, all right. So as I was saying, the reason why he needs these warm habitats is because Draco here, of course, is a lizard, but he is actually an ec he is ectothermic. Other and another fancy another name for that is um, cold blooded. So that means that Draco really relies on the warmth from either the sun or his or his environment to basically get energy. So the temperature of his environment controls the temperature of his body. He's going to give us a nice yawn. He's a little tired now. Me too. I would like to take a little nap now. Maybe he'll take a, a nap after this live. 
Um, but as I was saying, the temperature of the environment um, controls the temperature of his own body. So that means that if he is cold, oh, he's another yawn. Wow, he's really tired this afternoon. Um, so that means that if he's, a, if he's cold, in order for him to warm up and get energy to be able to move around and search for food, he actually needs to sit out in the sun. And it's called basking. They're going to sit out in the sun and kind of just lay out there, kind of like when we go tanning at the beach, we just lay out in the sun, get nice and warm. That's kind of exactly like what Draco will do. And that is going to give him all his, his energy that he needs in order to be able to go out and find food. And then if he gets too hot in the sun and he needs to cool down, he's going to definitely jump into the water and cool himself off. Um, Haley's saying, I love basking myself. I love basking too. I love going out tanning on the beach. <laughs> Um, so that is why warm habitats are very, very important for Draco. And it's that is why where his environment that he lives in is perfect for him. Now, another really cool thing about him is, like I said, he is also semi uh, arboreal or semi terrestrial. So that means that half of the time he's going to be living or he's going to be um, wandering around on the ground or he's going to be climbing up on the trees. He actually will spend um, his nights in the trees. He's going to sleep in the trees and then he's going to spend his days uh, in the water. In order to in uh, for in order for him to properly climb trees, however, Draco actually has very very sharp claws right here on his hands and feet, um, and he uses them to help climb up into trees. And something really cool that Draco is able to do actually is that if there was a predator in the wild that was chasing Draco around or trying to get at him. Draco is going to definitely, if he's on the ground, he's going to run up into the trees to try and get uh, get some safety. However, if that predator follows Draco up in the trees. What Draco is able to do is he will run up all the way to the tip of a branch that overhangs the water. And he's finally going to jump off of that branch into the water and swim away. And that is what that is. Um, that is how he's going to escape his predators. And it's really, really cool that Draco is able to do that. However, you guys could see he's a very, very big lizard. And he's actually one of the largest uh, lizards that can be found on the continent of South America. So because of this, he actually doesn't have that many predators. His only main predators in the wild are going to be definitely alligators um, or jaguars or big, big anacondas are going to be his main predators in the wild. Other than that, he doesn't really have any other ones. Um, last thing I'm going to say about Draco, we're talking about his tail again. You could see his awesome long tail. Now, Draco is actually part of the family of lizard called the whipped tailed family of lizards. Now, if you guys have a guess of what do you think a whipped tailed family of lizard is, what do you guys think that is? Whipped tailed. Now, that basically essentially means that Draco could use his tail like a whip. So that means that, it, again, if a predator was bothering him and maybe there wasn't a tree around for him to get up in, what Draco's going to do is he's going to take this really nice long tail. See, right now he's going to try and, and climb up on this little uh, tree that we have on the side here. You can see how much of a climber he is. He loves climbing. And now his nail's getting caught on, on the little uh, carpet here. So as I was saying, um, a predator is going to... If it's bothering him, he's going to take his tail, whip it back and forth and smack that predator right in the face. So that's pretty uh, that's pretty um, good enough for to tell that predator to back off. And also, if you guys could see these scales on his tail, they're actually very, very long or very sharp. Sorry. So it would hurt Draco if, if he were to get smacked in the face. We're just going to change the camera back onto me so that we could see myself a little bit better. Awesome. Uh, but all right. So, yes, you could see again, very, very long tail. And it would definitely hurt if I get smacked in the face by his tail. And I <laughs> I definitely hope that doesn't happen with me and Draco. But we have a great relationship and he's very comfortable just walking around on the table, hanging out and just having a great time. But all right, I think uh, that about does it for Draco. I hope you guys learned so much about our South American am animals today and had a great time. I'm going to pass it back over to Earth Ranger Sadie, and she is now going to talk a little bit about our Earth Rangers app. But we will see you next time. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Draco, Nacho, and of course, my favorite, don't tell the others, Quillo. So uh, if you guys liked this video and you liked reading, uh, learning about all of our animals, then you definitely need to get the Earth Rangers app. Now it is free to join and it is where kids go to save animals. We have things like animal adoptions, which allow you to adopt animals like the polar bear, um, the grizzly bear. We've got red fox, arctic fox, osprey, and that's just to name a few. Now when you adopt these, 
you are actually supporting real conservation projects that go to protecting these species in Canada. As well as we have cool missions, like Kyla said at the beginning, that you can do in your own backyard, like building backyard habitats for, say, the toads or butterflies that live in your community. As well, we have fun things on our Wildwire blog, like top 10 lists, quizzes, and more. And you get to do this all while traveling through some of Canada's coolest habitats on your quest to become the ultimate Earth Ranger. Now, we have a special code for you to use as well in the app called FB Summer. Um, that will be the code that you can use later to unlock some special rewards. We would also like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsor, Honda, for allowing us to come to you one last time for this awesome, super special South American lie with all of our favorite animals. Now, just to wrap up some things that we talked about, because we did have three different animals, we were talking about how important it is for South American animals to live in specifically South America. There are forests all over the world, but the uh, right temperature, humidity, um, the right kinds of foods that live here, and all the different animals that live together in South America depend on the rainforest for many different things. So that's why it's really important that we protect all the animals and the habitats here as well, especially because Draco, Nacho, and Quillo all rely on those trees in South America. So that's why it's definitely important that we protect the rainforest because a lot of different animals live there. Mammals like Quillo, reptiles like Draco, and cute little birds just like Nacho. Thank you so much for tuning into all of our lives. Make sure to share this with your family and friends if you enjoyed it because I'm sure they would too. And we will hopefully see you another time soon. Thank you so much everyone for watching. See you later.